This puck is riding on air. Mind blowing, right? Airblade's a game changer because Airblade makes hockey faster. I'm the inventor and CEO of Airblade, human-sized air hockey rink. This prototype here is 24 feet by 40 feet. A pro-sized rink is 80 feet by 200 feet. People just can't wait to see what a real life-size air hockey rink might be like. But before they can scale things up, Mark and his team have to work out the kinks. And today, they're doing just that. Getting this prototype up and running for a good old-fashioned game of shinny. An airblade rink is powered by a lot of air to enable a bigger puck like these kind of pucks to float on the surface. Uh, this puck in particular weighs about 130 grams, and as you can tell, it's indented here to capture the air as it floats on the surface. Each of these panels is four feet by eight feet. It's uh, got 3,600 holes in it. It's pressurized uh, with a blower system. And here's the blower. It's a seven and a half uh, horsepower blowing 13,000 CFM that blows into a manifold that funnels the air underneath the surface. On the top surface, you have a puck that flies around on a cushion of air and it hauls butt. It goes really fast. This rink has two blowers together, forcing over 700 cubic meters of air per minute. The rink is, I'd say, about 70, 75% assembled. The dasher boards are almost up. The tricky part is an electrician up there running uh, the three-phase electrical power, which is, which is the challenging part when you use these kind of blowers. They are incredibly powerful, but will only work if the team can seal the rink. Actually, you can't move it. It's hitting the, it's hitting the, Brian, you can't push it any further. I realize that. But you still have the same problem. You're still gonna have to make it airtight between here and here. You've got the duct tape, but we're just trying to cover up some of the, uh, the air loss to get as much air impossible into the plenum to elevate the puck. This is gonna do the trick for now. We're gonna fire up the first blower here, put some air in the rink. So 30 amps of uh, three-phase power. 30 amps, how much electricity is that? A lot. I hear noise, I hear wind blowing. Here's the air loss here, here. Not so much down here. Uh, it's pretty good right here, Brian. We did a good job. The only air loss is right here. So I bet some tape will do this, right? What a miracle a $3 piece of uh, roll of tape does. You want to test it out? Test it out. It shouldn't stop. Theoretically, there's not enough air right now. You can feel the air pressure. The air holes need to be cleaned up right now. There's a lot of air in them, and that's what we'll do. But here we go. That's it. That's, that's perfectly how we want this to work. Um, and this puck is a prototype. It's not our final puck. And so much of the floating on the surface depends upon the, the, um, how the puck is configured. And here we go again. That's just perfect right there. The trick is, right, to go like this. See? It's not ice, but it seems like ice. It's actually faster. We're one blower short, I think from having it be an ultimate. And it may not even be the blower. It may be a such thing as having the holes drilled a little bit smaller. Uh, they're an eighth inch now. Maybe they need to be a, a 16, 16th inch or one thirty second. So for us to spend 10 hours to assemble a ring 24 by 40 feet, we think there are a lot of engineering challenges that we have yet to undertake. And build this in a manner that can be assembled within an hour. That's kind of the goal that, we can, that we're striving for. What's next for us after setting up this Airblade Prototype 2 is to build a professional rank that is 17 times larger. Instead of chasing the puck around, you're actually on the boards with the puck going around. It's nothing you've ever seen. It's the coolest thing ever. I, I can't wait until the actual full rink is done so everyone can see it. Airblade is because sometimes ice hockey is just a little too slow.